Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lands pre-release coverage of Dark Souls 3. We just created our character, we're gonna finalize it. Okay to start game with this character? It's really the kind of character you should ask twice about. Uh, in this episode, we'll probably... fight some enemies. I don't want to spoil too much. Get, get to an area, perhaps even. We may swing our sword a little bit. We're, we're gonna start with what is, you know, the Dark souls -y version of the tutorial. Uh, this is installed on my SSD, if I remember correctly, so the loading times are actually not too bad. Hopefully the audio balance is okay too. Feel free to let me know in the comments. But if you like the audio balance okay, don't say anything. You know, people like, they like 99% of it, but they're like, oh, it could be 1% louder. And then it just, you know, oh, now it's too loud. Now it's not loud enough. We got a Goldilocks situation here. So remember, when the bell tells the link to the fire is in danger, and the Lords of Cinder rise from their graves. But now we're rising from our grave in the Cemetery of Ash. Um, we'll, we'll do the whole tutorial here, of course, and I'll read all the messages on the ground. I am connected to the game online, so uh, there should be uh, messages written by players, but maybe not in our tutorial area. So, the controls are Dark Souls. If you've played Dark Souls before, you will be familiar with what's going on here. Left bumper is shield. I'm trying to parry to show off that left trigger is parry. Yo, don't kill me right off the bat here. You're not gonna believe me, but last night I parried this motherfucker the first time. There are also backstabs. Look, I'm not gonna need my, uh, all three Estus for this tutorial, probably. We got a fading soul from him. Uh, you can backstep and you can also roll. There is no jump anymore, which honestly I think is... It, it limits the game in terms of, like, the platforming, kind of like secret areas they can have. But the jumping was always real wonky. Uh, in, in Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2. So, you know, I believe you me, I've, I've tried all the requisite ways to get your character to jump. It seems like it's just a roll now, unless I'm missing out. There is also, you know, the ability to two-hand your weapon. I believe that if you're rolling uh, two different weapons, um, or sorry, if you're two-handing, I believe that you can have, uh, not two-handing, sorry, dual wielding. Let me go back here. Where, where does it tell me you can two-hand something? I don't want to misrepresent this because, again, access to the game is kind of limited, so I don't want to be just spreading misinformation around all over the place without having to. Also, it would be for the best if I didn't just get my ass kicked in the tutorial. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, let me read that. Dual wielding might not have been the term I was looking for. While two-handing, two use right weapon skills. I have never done this in Dark Souls 3 yet. I guess this is like a repost? So if a character tries to hit me, will I just like parry them or something? Or That is cool, man! Alright, so there's like a whole new moveset that, that way. Um, X is use item, which of course we use for our Estus Flask. That is real neat. And there's kick as well. Kick is back. And it works most of the time. Uh, and there's parry and repost. Okay, so that's basically the end of the tutorial. Um, I'll show off our starting equipment here as well, uh, in addition to the menu that we've got here. So the starting equipment, we've got uh, a long sword. You can see its attack power there. Physical is 110 plus 14. Low requirements, low scaling with strength and dex. Uh, we have a night shield, which blocks 100% of physical damage. Uh, it's actually pretty good. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much again, but I've, uh, I've seen some equipment later in the game. I, I, let me put it this way. I picked up some shields. I think this is still maybe the best shield that I've picked up so far. I'm going to take off my helmet and maybe my gloves just to take us under 50% equipment load and so I can see our wonderful head. Uh, oh, Ashen Estes Flask restores FP. Okay. Inventory. We've got uh, Way of the White Circlet. Restore the link to other worlds. I don't know what these are used for yet. Black Separation Crystal obviously is to... If you don't want to have a, a phantom summoned anymore, just kick it out. Dark Sign... Unlimited use, lose souls and return a bonfire, and then the, the souls we started with. Fire gem creates a fire weapon, and we start with a long sword. Here's our status, as you can see. FP 56 out of 93. When we rest, that'll probably replenish, but it's not like we have miracles anyway. Change weapons, toggle items, you're all familiar with that, of course. Ridiculous. Just looks ridiculous. Um... By the way, this is on PC, like, default settings. It runs well, it looks good, occasional frame rate dips, but not, like, consistently, just when you're walking into a new area sometimes. Um, and I don't know if 
Like, let me put it this way. This looks good. It, it looks like DS fix is not required. And uh, lot, lots of impressive lighting and uh, and stuff like that. But I'll let Nick critique that as he gets a little... Or has, when he gets access, I should say. Alright. There's a bonfire. We will rest at said bonfire. We will get FP back. HP. And also our endurance, of course. And uh, we learned rest. Which, if I just maybe switch point down, you can see that we got gestures here for communication. I don't think we can be invaded just yet, just because this is still the tutorial phase. Um, but there you go, there's your gesture. And we do actually have a boss coming up, but it's very much a tutorial boss. But I like that there's a tutorial boss. It's, it's kind of a Dark Souls tradition to have a tutorial boss. Um, I can't remember if Dark Souls 2 did, and the first giant wasn't really, or I think it might have been called the first giant, but what I mean, or the last giant, but what I mean is the first giant you fight was actually fairly tough, at least the first time through the game, so, uh, I, I miss kind of like the, uh, the dragon you fight in the opening area of the, uh, uh Undead Cemetery, or sorry, Undead Asylum. Um, this, this harkens more to that, I guess I would say. If we got hit by that, we would take a little damage because our shield doesn't block 100% of fire damage. We're just clearing these guys out. Let me put it this way. This is Dark Souls. Like, it's not Bloodborne. Um, you don't have to learn the difference between the, the two games in the sense that, you know, Bloodborne is a little bit more aggression-focused, Dark Souls is a little bit more defense. If you've played Dark Souls, you're not going to have too much of a hard time uh, getting into this because it pretty much works exactly the same. Bloodstains are here, which means we must be connected online. You can see this guy. Oh, oh, I rolled. I'm dead. Way to go, dummy. You just got splashed on. Anyway, okay. We got to pick up this here. Remove sword. I really thought that this was Artorius the first time I, had, I saw him. As you might have expected. I've tried to do everything to not fight this guy, man. When you see a big guy on the ground in Dark Souls, and then you can interact with him, you're like, please no. <laughs> Just let me go to the bonfire. But this guy's real mad that we've taken his sword. Um, but, to fight him, we pretty much just execute Dark Souls 101, which is stab him in the dick and run around him. But, I have fought some other bosses in the game. It's not a strategy that works on all of them. This guy kind of reminds me of, like, um, Dragon Rider from Dark Souls 2 in the sense that... You know, as you fight him, you're like, this is very Dark Soulsy. This is a big guy with a big weapon. Um, apparently, occasionally, he becomes a HP Lovecraft-esque uh, demon from the Abyss. Which is another theme that you're going to probably see a little bit more of in Dark Souls 3 is uh, these transforming enemies. We almost got him. Just maybe a little two-hand action can finish it off. And that's Index, or sorry, Udex uh, Gundir dead here. Not really that much of a problem, uh, all things considered. I think I might have had the volume a little too high there. But do keep in mind, this guy is the tutorial boss as well. Uh, at least I would describe him as the tutorial boss. And we have now become Embered, which I think is this game's version of Human, but I'm not totally sure yet. I mean, if you're watching this in the future, have some sympathy. This is out, and I know like two people who have it, and I haven't talked to them yet. One thing you might be noticing at the uh, bonfires, there's no level up option. It does kind of use the Dark Souls 2 mechanic of having to talk to um, having to talk to an NP NPC to level up instead. Uh, and I think we're just about to, to get introduced to said NPC. And said area. As we enter through here. Just want to do a little exploration to make sure we're getting all items. Broken straight sword, not ideal. Uh, that's how we open our menu, and we'll just take a quick peek around here. Maybe we're a little bit further away from getting to that next, uh, getting to that next area, which it should be. But keep in mind, you might be looking at this and going, "Oh, the, the, the boss is too easy. The pace of the game is too fast. You're, you're getting bonfires too quickly." It's the tutorial, man. Don't don't sweat it too much. Now, I mean, even still, after beating that boss, I'd say we're still basically in the tutorial section of the game. And you'll know how I'm delineating that once we get to the next area. But let's not spoil too much. Again, great lighting. And I still... I, please keep in mind, I don't know this, okay? This is this is all conjecture. 
I'm looking at this architecture here. Just wanted to make sure there were no enemies. And I'm thinking, you know, back to the opening cutscene, talking about the Lords of Cinder. And doesn't that look like... This looks a little Anorlando-esque. Also notice people are always talking about this area called uh, Lothric. Which to me sounds kind of like Lordran. Could be a coincidence. But let's keep in mind that name did have to be chosen. So maybe there's no such thing as coincidences. Maybe the the parallels or the, the the literal ties between Dark Souls 3 and Dark Souls 1 are a little bit more um, pronounced than they are between Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2, where those games were pretty much um, linked thematically, I guess. At least that's my understanding of the lore, but maybe, maybe I've missed out on uh, developments there. But maybe this is like a little bit more of a, a pseudo, I don't want to say direct sequel, but a sequel in the same land, maybe? I don't know. I assume that's something that maybe will start to become a little bit more clarified as we move onwards. But, you know, Dark Souls is very rarely told in a literal fashion. It's, it's tone and atmosphere and, hey, check it out. Firelink Shrine. When I got, uh, when I got here for the first time, I was, it was like one of those moments where, like, you know, Gandalf rides back on the screen and you're like, well, Gandalf! Gandalf's here! Okay, so we insert the sword of the boss into this, and that creates the bonfire for us. It also enables uh, the ability for us to fast travel between bonfires. So it does have early fast travel, uh, like uh, Dark Souls 2. And this kind of serves as a hub world that we use to travel uh, further into the game. So we're going to move from here onto uh, the High Wall of Lothric, which will be the next section. Um, let's check out these messages. Could this be a May the Flames Guide Thee? All the more could this be a May the Flames guide. Great, great message. Applaud. We did it, team. You the real MVP. Could this be a May the Flames guide? The all the more could this be a May the Flames guide? Spouse ahead. You know that's despair. No, I'm not gonna actually disparage it. Welcome to the bonfire, unkindled one. I'm a firekeeper. Twisted firekeeper. have left their thrones and must be delivered to them to this end I am at thy side all right so we can talk to her pretty much repeats what you've heard so far but I'll, I'll show you the dialogue regardless um, the darkness within me I believe in a thing called love Take nourishment from these sovereignless souls just listen to the rhythm of my heart. Um, we're gonna level up a little bit here I'm the most boring, like, first-time Dark Souls player, or at least I should say when I play a Dark Souls game for the first time, I'm always like, what worked in Dark Souls 1? Well, a um, few levels in Vitality, a few levels in Endurance, uh, typically has, has done good work for me. We'll talk to her as well. One, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how. Ashen one, bring me souls plucked from their vessels. All right, I can do that. There's also a uh, crestfallen warrior type character here. Ah, another one roused from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. <laughs> Gives me conniptions. And it have us seek the lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. But we are talking true legends with the metal to link the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. Gives us the collapse option here. I don't know, dude. All these em or not emotes. All these uh, all these gestures are worth something here. But let's uh, let's replace joy because we have jump for joy with collapse and see how that looks. Oh, that's beautiful. There's a lot of situations in which I'll I'll be able to find use for that. I'm sure. Um, we'll explore like a little bit of the Firelink Shrine area here. Read engraving. Holy King Lothric, last hope of his line. Uh oh, I think we got a little 
little bug here. Not bug, just Dark Souls uh, uniqueness, where sometimes that message stays on the screen because I didn't dismiss it. Saint Aldrich of the Deep. What I'm really hoping is that maybe these are bosses and as we kill them, they will come sit in these fucking thrones and talk to us, give us advice. That would be dope. Yorm the Giant of the Profaned Capital. Well, I, I remember the name Yorm the Giant from that opening cutscene. So I'm, I'm assuming that maybe there is indeed uh, some merit to my original assessment. Yo, NL, you know what's uh, you know what's coming, man. No, I actually don't. I haven't I haven't played that much of it. Mostly because I just arrived home yesterday uh, from like 14 hours of travel, so I'm a little out of the loop there. Let's uh, see what other NPCs we have here. You may notice the uh, telltale uh, blacksmithing sound of a man hitting a hammer. Onto an anvil. I'm just trying to remember where the heck that that Joker even is here. I've also never gone up this way. Maybe this leads to the next bonfire. Uh, although we can also just travel to the next bonfire uh, using the uh, well, using the fast travel. You can travel from any bonfire to any bonfire. At least that's my experience so far. All right, one second. Crestfallen Warrior. Um, I don't know what this lady's name is yet, but we'll just call her, call her the Firekeeper. And, oh my, could this be another tie-in to Dark Souls 1? Time for friendship. You know what? You're goddamn right. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. A toilsome journey, I wager. You require good arms. Good thing I spent so much time at the character creation. Any smithy of weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. Yeah, so this is Andre of Astora, I think. It's at least Andre, which is a cool callback or like direct link between Dark Souls 1 and this. A lot Estus. So, you, uh, if you're a sorcerer, this is kind of a neat mechanic. You may choose to have four uh, FP improving uh, Estus and one, or sorry, three to one, like less HP regen, more magic regen. Or if you're a character like us that doesn't use any magic, you could just have four um, health Estus and we'll allot it. I assume that that can actually be uh, changed later. Otherwise, I may have screwed us, but yeah, there you go. Uh, you can also reinforce your weapon, but we don't have any Titanite shards, but we're going to get them pretty soon here. Hey, be careful. I don't want to see my work squandered. Actually, Andre, <laughs> what you're supposed to say is, don't get yourself killed out there. Okay, um, let's, let's take the high road here, and I want to see if there is uh, just a way that we can walk to this next area. Probably not going to play in this video until the next boss. We'll just go a little bit longer. Um, where the heck was that? Down here, maybe. Um, we'll just go a little bit longer, maybe to the next bonfire, and then we'll end the episode. But I figured we just showed the tutorial so far, so we might as well move on a little bit. This is where we came in. Then we go to the right and come up here. All right, all right, all right. I got it. I'm pretty sure this is where the next bonfire will be, although I just teleported to it the first time that I played, so... I, I may be mistaken, but this might be new stuff to me, which is also interesting. Or this could still be the Firelink Shrine area. This is new. Ah, there's a shortcut we uh, we have to unlock somewhere. Well, it's not quite the <laughs> robust area I'd originally considered it to be. Okay, so we'll just fast travel to the other area. That's cool. Um, one of the things I think that is going to be a point of contention is that so far it doesn't seem... Again, I'm super early. So please take this with a grain of salt. So far it doesn't seem like there's necessarily as much... Uh, Looping and interact, interacting uh, architecture. The bonfire will deliver thee to Lothric. Um, it's basically like, hey, asshole, if you're running around forever trying to find something, just go to the bonfire. Thought maybe it could be an illusory wall. Um, there doesn't seem yet to be as much kind of looping back on itself, kind of architecture, Dark Souls-y one style stuff uh, as there was in the original Dark Souls, but I could be mistaken in that. That shortcut right there that I can't access yet has... Uh, has given me pause for that. So we're going to travel to the High Wall of Lothric here. This is an area I've been to. Thrallhood. Hood used to cover the head of lesser folk who were set to work as slaves throughout Lothric. 
also occasionally used to shame and humiliate criminals. Morn's legging. Black leggings bestowed upon Knights of Kareem, modeled on Morn, the Archbish Archbishop's Apostle, cast from a unique mineral resembling stone. A Kareem Knight will dedicate an entire career to attending a single maiden. Yo, I was reading that. Dragon Scale Ring. Ring of Osiris, former king of Lothric, reduces damage from backstabs. Robe of Prayer, Prince Lothric's robe. This prince, destined to be a lord of cinder, was cherished by the royal family despite being born into illness, a frail and shriveled child. His swaddling clothes are made of... Hey! Kind of reminds you of the, the story of, uh, like, Gwyn and, uh... And, uh, the, the character whose name I... Gwendolyn, there you go. The character I can't remember who, uh... Was like his kind of sickly son. Became the, the prince of the Dark Moon Blades. Alright. High Wall of Lothric. There should be a bonfire. Close by? Close by. Close by is good enough. Uh, kind of reminds me of Undeadburg a little bit. Kind of reminds me of uh, some of the early Bloodborne areas. There's our bonfire. I think we'll rest here. The video's a little short, but we're going to do a lot of stuff in the next one. So I'm going to call it for now. Uh, thanks for watching again. Thanks for your support on the series. Uh, if you want to avoid spoilers, don't watch until the game comes out, because there are going to be spoilers uh, starting especially right now. I'll be back shortly with another episode again. For now, thanks for watching, and, and I'll see you next time.